Tea Party, huh? Tea Party's a joke. I tell you, I heard that expression from day one. I didn't believe it at all. Um, the original Tea Party, Boston Tea Party, was a nonviolent protest that, you know, the English put a tariff on American tea exports and the Americans didn't approve of that. The colonists did not approve of that. So they went aboard the ships on the English ships, some of them disguised as Indians and stuff, you know, incognito. Not out there, in a, you know, protesting like morons, you know, like they did it incognito. And they threw all the English tea over into the ocean, into the bay, right? Nonviolent protest. Now, if we had this situation occur today, you know what would happen? You'd have Sarah Palin out there, the third grade school teacher going, Wah! or, you know, Alex Jones in Rush Limbaugh with the megaphones or something. I don't know. You know, or Beck, Glenn Beck. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. The Tea Party is lame. Actually, what you got to do is nonviolent non-compliance. That's what you got to do. That's what's going to break the damn deal. You know, the Tea Party, I was, you know, I don't know. I think this government shutdown deal was, uh, you know, a scam. It was like all pre-planned, a big drama thing or something. That's what it looks like. I don't know. But, you know, uh, I guess defunding the, the Obamacare would have been one of the ways to do it. But I guess they ain't got the strength to do that. But you got to remember this. You know, the Founding Fathers made the House of Representatives have the strongest part of the government, at least originally. And I mean, now you got the EPA and all this other garbage like that that can tell people what to do and all this type of stuff. But the originally... The Founding Fathers had the most power with the House of Representatives because, you know, two main things, really with money, really with money in the House of Representatives. You elect these guys every two years. And the problem is, you know, the Americans themselves, and, you know, part of it's through brainwashing on television and advertising, but it's the power of the money is actually with the House of Representatives, right? They appropriate all the funding. In other words, without money... You know, if the president has a law, he can't enforce it when he doesn't have the money or the funds to do it, right? And uh, the second thing is the power to coin money. In other words, you know, say for instance, all the banksters had all the gold. They had all. They had a hundred percent of the gold. They wanted to lend it to the government at fifty percent interest. I'm making a crazy example, but say that was the way it was. Well, what the House of Representatives can do, with being directly elected by the people, could say. We're not using gold as money. We're going to use our specially designed paper. And it's going to be the, our labors and productivity that's going to create this nation. And we're just going to use this as a medium of exchange. You know? <laughs> you got a way around it no matter what with the House of Representatives. Except people don't really look at it that way. And they just kind of think, you know, there's too much dirt thrown on the Congress. But you got to remember, who the hell elects them? The people! The people! And, you know, it's almost like today, the breed that's American today, at the time of the Re American Revolution in 1775-1776, is a hell of a lot different today than they were. You know? This is where I see a big correlation between uh, ancient Rome and the United States. It's almost like during the time of Rome, when uh, Hannibal was invading Rome and they destroyed the biggest army Rome ever put together up until that time, the Romans didn't quit. But, you know, later on, you know, in 460 AD or thereabouts, when Rome finally fell for the final time, guess what? I mean, hey, you know, back in the, you know, back in the day, they would have met them right there, out there in the field, and they would have tried to kick their ass at least, even if they didn't. You know what I mean? They would have, like, even if they lost, they would have still fought them. But nope, they hovered with inside the city walls. That's kind of like what's going on today. This Tea Party stuff is lame. And I've always said, figured it was lame, but I also figured out it got co-opted by the big bucks anyway. It's really co-opted by the big bucks. So your real option with the Tea Party, it's like, I don't even like that stuff, but I mean, it's like, you know, if you're going to be like in a Tea Party, basically you're going to have to be playing non-compliance. That's really what it is. I mean, I don't know what the hell to say. I mean, that's what the Tea Party was about. You know, they voted something in uh, against the Americans. They put a tariff on the American tea that 
that, you know, because the British tea, they didn't like that. You know, the East Indian, Dutch, whatever the hell, the East Indian Company, whatever the hell it was that they get the tea from, they didn't like the competition coming from the Americans, so they taxed it, right? Well, you know, so non-compliance, right? That's what happened with the Tea Party. But, you know, today, I mean, if you applied the same situation and you went back in time, I don't know, Sarah Perlin would be out there with the protests, speaking in front of people, and they'd have a be carrying a bunch of signs, they wouldn't have dressed up like a bunch of Indians and go on the ships and throw the tea over the side, man. They wouldn't be doing that shit. No, because they're lame today, man. They're lame. But I can't say to do that, you know? I can't say to do that. I mean, I guess today you'd probably dress up like uh, an Iranian, right? <laughs> or, you know, wear a burqa. They wouldn't even know who the hell you are, you know? Just wear a burqa, you're all black, and you go on the ship and you... <laughs> And throw it over the tea, right? I mean, I don't know. I mean, you know, back then, you know, they, they used whatever the hell worked, you know, at that time. But the thing is, you know, today the Tea Party is lame as all hell. There's nothing to it. There's nothing to it. It's a bunch of fluff. And uh, to get around this stuff, it's going to require, require some real tricky type of non-compliance. Um, and... You know, the Tea Party was non-violent, non-compliance, but it got violent because the British got pissed off, you know. Or the money got pissed off. Not the British people. The money that controlled Great Britain got pissed off, you know. You know, the, the, the East India Company, whatever the hell it was. I forgot what the hell the damn name of it was that was controlling all the tea trade, you know. They got pissed off. They got pissed off, and they fought back. You know, so I guess... Uh, you know, you got to watch what the hell you get behind because you don't want to get behind nothing. You know, you want to be like incognito and you want to be a little bit non-compliant. I don't want to say too much specifically on here, but, you know, I can't advocate even throwing a tea over a freaking ship, you know. I can't even say that on here. Maybe that's not going to be a good, nice thing to do, but you're going to have to be non-compliant. You just can't go out there and say, I protest oh, this is terrible, I'm going to join the Tea Party, I'm going to give him a donation, I'm going to give a donation to Ron Paul's campaign. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to have to, the whole point of the Tea Party was non-compliance. Non and uh, they had the balls to be non-compliant, right? So, I don't know, man. I don't know what to say. I mean, uh, nobody today has got any balls. That's the problem, right? And I'm not saying, like, destroy shit, because, you know, the whole thing is, you know, these were good, hard-working Americans back during the colonial times, and they're getting screwed over, you know? It's not like you want to destroy stuff just to destroy stuff. You want to, you, you got to have a positive attitude in a better way. It's like you just can't take injustice and just take it and, like, put up a protest sign. You actually have to do a little bit more than that, you know? And that doesn't mean writing a check over to Ron Paul. Okay. So, uh, this Tea Party, man, it's lame, man. The, the new Tea Party is lame. It has nothing to do with the old Tea Party. It basically just co-opted the name. That's all it is.